Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with, with Warrior Notes. Welcome to Warrior Church this week. We are excited here at Warrior Notes at what God's doing and we are gonna be talking about a really favorite subject of mine. I like to talk about the demonic entities that are called momentum breakers. So that's what we're gonna talk about this week. So get ready to hear from God. We're gonna pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your spirit. Thank you for everything you're doing. And I want you, Lord, to have your way with all of us, all our friends, all over the world as we unite together to hear from you. Thank you, Father. And we are giving ourselves over to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just have your way. Open our eyes and open our understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to get right into it. And I like to talk about this because I saw when I was in heaven that the devil does not want me to talk about the momentum breakers and talk about his strategies and how he works to slow down Christians. So because I know this, I, I like this subject because it makes them really get, get upset with, with me by telling people about this. So it, he does these clandestine activities. As we all know, he, his, his uh, power, which, which he does have power, you know, he does have authority, but it's because it was given to him by man and he is able to do certain things on this earth, like lie, steal, kill and destroy. You know, he does all these things because he was the power was given to him through Adam and Eve. You know, but Adam and Eve had all the dominion and the power. And when they sinned, essentially it handed it over to this this cherub, this guardian cherub named Hallel who became um, Satan, you know, the rebellious one. Okay, so the, the, the evil spirits, they are told to slow Christians down. They can't really stop Christians because Christians live forever. Amen. You know, so Christians live forever, so they can't really get rid of them. But they, what they try to do is slow them down. So they, they, uh, they try to get... Christians to believe that God wants them sick, wants them poor, yeah. uh, wants that oppression is part of just being here. And the reason that you're messed up is because that God made you that way, you know, but, but God didn't make you messed up, you know, um, you know, we, we can mess ourselves up without his help, you know, pretty good, you know, and, and so th th this, these are momentum breakers. In other words, Everything, you know, everything goes well with you until you start to really get in there with the Lord. And then all of a sudden your body starts acting up and then mm -hmm. your finances start acting up and then your family starts acting up. And then your relationships go sour and um, people flip out on you and they they uh, they are experiencing warfare. Your body experiences warfare. Your mind experiences warfare. Your family will experience warfare. They the demons might not be able to get to you, but they're just going to keep working out outside on the borders until they find a weak link, and they're going to they're going to get to you through someone else if they can't get to you themselves. Now remember this, because if if Satan can't get to you, he's just going to work his way out until he finds somebody that is willing to hurt you, willing to stop you. It, it doesn't matter who it is. I've seen the best fold. I've seen, I've seen people fold right before my eyes that I didn't think could fold. I've watched them fold. So, you know, join the crowd. If you're, if you're feeling like people have betrayed you and, <clears throat> and, and the terrible things that, you know, the demonic uh, entities influence people to do, you've had that happen just as well. It's not worth talking about right now. But the thing of it is, is that the Lord is all about momentum. And you think about even a locomotive train, you know, that's that's really long and got all these different uh, goods and s things on them. You know, we we could have uh, all kinds of really heavy things on a, on a train. You know, they, they just load them down. Sometimes you can see those double, they're double stacked, you know, which is to me like kind of... <laughs> dangerous looking, you know, yeah. I kind of don't want to be near the tracks when they see those double, yeah. the double ones. But anyway, you, you would not believe how much momentum a train has. In fact, if you talk to an engineer that is, is that is part of the, the railroad, they will tell you that they have to apply the brakes long before yeah. they want to stop. Yeah. And it's the same way with a ship. If you talk to a, a, a cruise ship captain, he will tell you that you got to like start turning way before you really would think you would want to turn, you know, because there's momentum and it keeps wanting to go in the same direction. 
and unless you have something that will supersede what what all you've already established as forward motion it takes a lot to it has something greater has to happen to offset the direction you're going into and this is newton's law uh, newton's laws of of gravity and momentum and things like that so we we know we know in the spirit that god is moving jesus said that the kingdom of god is advancing and he said that in the past those who were advancing with it were violently taking it they were taking it by force and we can see that with king david and all the wars and things like that and, and um, abraham and then all the things that happened it was very aggressive and see now in the new testament we are supposed to be uh, enforcing the gospel message and the, and the, and love so we're supposed to be loving people and we are supposed to be preaching the good news in the new testament we don't take a sword to somebody you know that doesn't believe like we do you know we 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 love them we you know and so th that's what that's talking about. I know everybody has an interpretation of Jesus saying that the violent take it by force. But see, in the New Testament, we don't we, we don't do the same things that King David uh, did. You know, even Peter, you know, whacked off Malchus's ear, you know, in the garden there, you know, and Jesus like, OK, hey, back off. You know? <laughs> you know, so anyway. OK, so anyway, it's the demon's intention to break your momentum. That's what they're told to do. And that's the bottom line. And I saw this. So. I knew that if I started telling everybody all over the world that there's momentum breakers and here's here's what you need to be aware of, I knew that they would be so mad at me that I was telling all their secrets because yeah. they, their 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 power really is in their cloaking that they they're not readily seen unless you have the discerning of spirits as a gift of the spirit, or you've developed your own spirit to see. Mm -hmm. So here we go, fasting and praying and repenting. And, and sharing the gospel and helping others, these are all things that cause momentum. You know, when, when we pray, when we read the word, when we, we fast, we're sharing the gospel, we're, we're helping others, we're, we're outwardly moving and advancing the kingdom, okay? We're actively quoting the word, we're praying, and we're saying that, that we're saying we're going to do the gospel, just not preach it. And you go out and you help people and you're always available that if the spirit tells you to do something, you know, to minister to others. OK, that is momentum. OK, so what the, Satan will try to do through his evil spirits is he'll try to cut off your your financial flow so that you have money problems and then you're working extra and then um that, you know, then that slows you down and then then he will uh, inflict your body and then that'll slow you down. Then he'll hit your relationships and then you, you spend hours uh, trying to, to make that right. You know, when you could be doing other things, you know, and it just goes on and on and on. Then and, and see, the thing of it is, is that it, it, that Satan wants to slow you down. And I'm here to tell you that these momentum breakers can be demolished they can be they can be destroyed they can be stopped you know but the biggest way to stop to, to stop these momentum breakers in their mode is to expose them because see once you act as though you can see them and that you've nailed them they say okay now i know what i'm dealing with and i i got you now it freaks them out because they their confidence is actually in the fact that they can't be seen okay number two is is that is that if you are constantly being hit every time you get some momentum going, something else happens, uh, the best thing you can do is start laughing because God laughs at his enemies. He sits in heaven and laughs because his enemies are coming to nothing. This is very disheartening for an evil spirit. And I, I, I'm, so I'm telling you, this is, this, if you talk as though you can see them, That's and good. then if you laugh gay, at baby. them and don't take them serious... <laughs> They are disheartened because the only the, the two all modes the, that they operate the in is they want to see a response from you. They want to see that they're effective and they want to know that they're invisible. If you if you do, if you oh, take care of those song, two things and you let them know they're, they're not hilarious. invisible anymore and that that uh, they're not uh, they're they're not effective. If you let them know I can see you and you're not effective, um, they're done and. They, they don't have a plan B. And this is hilarious because they don't. They, ha they don't have a plan B. So they totally put everything into you not, not knowing what, where they are, what they're doing, and that, that they got you, that you're, they've got you thinking you're a victim. 
And that's their biggest goal right there is they just want you to be a victim. Now, I hope you're all listening to me all over the world because, you know, you know these demons just want you to feel like you're a victim. Yeah. And it seems like everything you do, something else happens. So you're almost ready for it. And I remember, I mean, and I just want to finish with this little story. And um, uh, before I do that, let me mention Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. That will be the scripture. The Passion Translation talks about the great cloud of witnesses who encircle us. And they, they are the ones that are cheering us on in our marathon race, in our life race. They're the ones that are with us in spirit, and they're cheering us on. And because of the, 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 our determination, we are going to just look at the, the mark that we're going to, we're gonna, which is the finish line. And they're all cheering us on. Now, I say that because that will keep your momentum up, knowing that there are people, even your family members that have gone on to, to be with the Lord already. They're, they're, they're well aware of your spiritual progress. They might, they might not know everything that's going on down here, but they do know about your spiritual progress. So I, I wanted to mention that because they're in, it talks about in the, in the Aramaic that they encircle us like a cloud around us. But see, you can't see them. And that's what you need to focus on, not on these demons that are trying to break your momentum. Just, just hear the crowd just roaring and cheering you on and, and just keep going. I'm doing that now. I mean, uh, the Apostle Paul and, and all those uh, wonderful saints up there, they, they know who you are. They built a foundation for us, but now we're finishing it off. We're at the end of the age. We're like, we're like it. And they're like cheering us on. Come on, man. We did it. You can do it, you know. And um, okay, so with, with that being said, I, um, I remember this sto- the, what happened to us. Kathy, Kathy and I, when we got, uh, got a house, anywhere we got a house, we always kind of dealt with like animals that were on the outside that wanted in the inside of the house, you know, and it's just crazy. Everywhere we went, uh, even even Fluffy, you know, any kind of animal wanted to be inside with us. And so there there are boundaries and, you know, we're not Noah's Ark. So we, you know, we just, you know, no one invited these animals in. So because we didn't invite them in, they just decided to, to break in, you know. So we... Then I'll just stick with a recent one where we had squirrels that that just wanted in our house. And they they would I, I mean, I'd be playing my keyboard and they'd be sitting on the windowsill, just sitting there looking at me as I'm playing. I'm thinking you know, birds would line up and just sit there. And I'm thinking, I guess, it's, you know, maybe one day I'll play for people, you know, but I guess. I'll, <laughs> but what happened was then the next thing, you know, we could hear them in the attic and then in the walls and. I'm like, dear Lord, you know, so we we spent thousands of dollars and went through different people until we we finally were able to keep them out of our house. And they just yeah. kind of gave up and they just kind of like went silent for a while. But I knew they were up to something. So one day we went out and something was going on with our car, with one of our SUVs. So we had somebody come over and he goes, he comes in and he shows me and there's all these like nuts and you know, like a store, storage of nuts for like a year inside of our, our car up in the engine. And so even into the distributor, the cap and everything, it was just full of stu- of food, you know, like the squirrels had were just storing stuff there and they had built their nest there. So they didn't give up and they they just they just kept coming at us. So, um, you know, ev- eventually I, we took our authority and that we don't talk anymore. You know, the, the, the squirrels just don't talk anymore to us. But that we took our authority and stopped it. But what I'm trying to tell you is, is that the enemy is, is going to try to gain access to you. And if you shut one thing off, they're going to try to find another thing. And so I'm encouraging you that, that demons are pests. They're just, they're just... They're, they're, they're desperate. They're outside looking in at you. You're in, they're out. They want to be where you are, but they cannot be. You know, these, these demon spirits, they, they really had their chance and they did, they, they did not do what they were supposed to do. And so there is no resurrection for them. There is no re- redemption. So because of that, I, I just want to encourage you to keep those pests out of your dwelling place. You know, spiritually drive them out and be aggressive with them and don't let them trip you up. Don't let them, uh, you know, have any rest at all. I say that because eventually they leave you alone because they don't have another plan. 
And, and so be encouraged, and I want you to talk about this. Um, just talk among yourselves some of the things that, that you see that could be momentum breakers and label them. Yes. And then also talk about yielding to joy, uh, the, the joy of the Lord, which would cause you to be happy in a situation where it would be abnormal. And then those, the, those demons are going to say, we're not being effective here. We're, we're out of here. And, and so let me pray for you. And I break all those momentum breakers in the name of Jesus. I, I come against every curse yes. that has been spoken over you, all my Amen. friends all over the world. Amen. We come against every evil spirit, every, every momentum breaker. You are not a victim. Every curse is broken. You in are a Christ. beloved child of God. And Satan has lost this fight. And I, I come I against lost. and I drive out those momentum breakers right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father. Amen. Just love on all our friends right now. No, in the all name the curses of Jesus. the Watchtower has put on you Thank are broken you. in the name of Christ. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you on the next session. God bless. All right, week 21, Momentum Breakers. And Hebrews 12 in the Passion Translation reads, As for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination, for the path has been already marked out before us. We look away from the natural realm and we fasten our gaze onto Jesus, who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation, and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. All right. The devil does not want me to talk about this topic because it exposes his strategies and how he works to slow Christians down. He does have power and authority, but it's because it was given to him by man. He's able to do certain things like steal, kill, and destroy because the power he received was given to him through Adam and Eve when they sinned. I am not sure, Alexandra, if um, you are speaking, but there's a meal on your side. Oh, man. So thanks for telling me that. Um, Cause I was like talking and uh, yeah, man, I got to reread this again. Okay, man. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. As for us, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the path has been already marked out before us. We look away from the natural realm and we fasten our gaze onto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing what you that you would be his, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits, sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. So the devil does not want me to talk about this topic because it exposes his strategies and how he works to slow Christians down. He does have power and authority, but it's because it was given to him by man. He's able to do certain things like steal, kill, and destroy because the power he received was given to him through Adam and Eve when they sinned. Adam and Eve had all the dominion and power, and when they sinned, they essentially handed it over to Satan. He was a guardian cherub named Hillel. Hillel who became Satan, the rebellious one. His main goal is to slow Christians down, but he can't stop or get rid of us because we live forever. The evil spirits try to get Christians to believe that God wants them to be sick or poor or oppressed. And if any Jehovah's Witness is watching or XJW, this is not in the Bible, uh, but Kevin Zadai died and went to heaven. And he, while he was up there, he learned that Satan's name was Hillel. So if we can just all take a moment right now to blaspheme him, 
Uh, Hillel, you are a homosexual. Okay. When you're <laughs> when you're going strong with God, fasting, praying, and sharing the gospel, and you've picked up momentum, the devil will try to stop it. He uses momentum breakers to try to break your stride with the Lord. He'll try to cut off your financial flow so that you have money problems, and then you'll have to work extra hours, or he will inflict your body, and then that'll slow you down. Then he'll hit your relationships, and you'll spend hours trying to make that right when you could be doing other things, and it just goes on and on because he wants to slow you down. Even if the evil spirits can't get to you, they'll try to work their way outside the borders around you to try to get you through someone else. They try to find a weak link, but the Lord is all about momentum. So, um, question. When you are pressed with a hard situation and it seems like the enemy is coming at you, how do you handle it? What do you do? How do you navigate with God? So, um, you don't lose your cool. Honestly, like you have to keep your cool. The way, uh, what he's talking about here is like, they'll try to work their way outside the borders around you. So like, if you watch the matrix, uh, uh, my friend Leonidas made this analogy. Um, so if anybody's seen the matrix, you, you remember the agent Smith could take control of somebody in the matrix at any time and he could be anywhere at any moment. So what Satan and the demons are like that, like anybody that's not saved can become a cat they can become a vessel for the enemy and you can have an agent smith manifesting at any time because they're always trying to get to you through someone else i remember kevin sharing a story how he was walking to his airplane when he was a flight attendant and he saw because he, he has the gift of seeing in the spirit realm he saw a demon come into a person that was next to him right? Like a black shadow. And then that person immediately walked into him and, and t like pushed him over. They, they like tried to push him over. So that's how it is. It's like uh, thousands of small moving pieces. Think about a locomotive train. They're very long and they have different goods on them. They're loaded down and sometimes they're double stacked, which to me is kind of dangerous looking. I don't want to be near the tracks when I see one of these going by. You would not believe how much momentum they have. If you were to take talk to a railroad engineer, they would tell you that they have to apply the brakes long before they want to stop. It's the same way with a ship. If you talk to a cruise ship captain, he will tell you that you have to start turning way before you think you would want to turn because there's momentum. And it wants to keep going in the same direction. Unless you have something that will supersede what you've already established as forward motion, it will continue to go in that direction. It takes a lot of, to offset the direction you're going into, and something greater has to happen. This is Newton laws, Newton's law of gravity and momentum. We know in the spirit that God is moving. Jesus said that the kingdom of God is advancing. He said that the in the past, those who were advancing with it were violently taking it by force. And we can see that with King David and all the wars they fought, it was a great aggressive approach. In the New Testament, we are supposed to be enforcing the gospel message in love. We're supposed to be loving people and preaching the good news in the New Testament. We don't take a sword to somebody that doesn't believe like we do. Instead, we love them. Yeah, we don't want to criticize people and judge them. So question, in what ways can you build up momentum of God? Discuss how you would approach people in love when you share the gospel with them. So one way to build momentum is like, like uh, cutting off Netflix, all that garbage, right? TV, uh, sports, video games, worldly music, <sighs> just a bunch of crap. Get rid of it. Be like, you know, like, uh, look, Tom Brady, he just lives and breathed. He lived and breathed, bro, uh, breathed football his entire career. That's why he was so good. He, could, he was like unstoppable. He won like six or eight. I think it was like eight championships. I don't really know. So Christians have to be the same way. We have to live and breathe God. That's how we build momentum and become unstoppable in the spirit realm. And you have to pray a lot. I'm telling you, man, you guys got to pray a lot. Like you got to tithe like 10% of your day. So that's like 2.4 hours per day. You got to spend in prayer. And the Lord once gave me a dream 
when I started praying an hour, uh, I, when I started praying at least an hour a day, like uh, a year and a half ago, the first, the, I had a dream. Um, I think it was the first night that I went an hour. So in the dream, I was uh, in a professional boxing match and I've been in fights before and you don't know where the punch is going. To hit you like they they'll swing and you have you really have to have like superhuman reflexes but in the dream and the fight that i was in i could i knew where this guy was going to swing before he was going to swing and so i was dodging his punches and his haymakers before like as soon as, as like the second that his shoulder started moving i would dodge them so he he couldn't hit me and then every time he would miss me i would hit him with like a flurry of punches and then i heard god's voice say but he was talking like a, I can't remember. So I heard his voice. He was like a personal trainer, like, you know, the guy in the corner. And he's like, it was like that movie in Rocky. You remember Mikey? And he's like, um, he's like, it's the prayer warriors that, that always win their battles. Something like that. I'm being overly theatrical, though. Um, so prayer warriors always win their battles. That's how you build momentum is becoming a prayer warrior and it was daniel daniel the book of daniel says that god found him irresistible because of his prayers you want to be irresistible to god pray a lot i'm telling you man <laughs> it's amazing okay so it's the keys to stop momentum breakers uh, an aka familiar spirits these momentum breakers, aka familiar spirits, can be stopped. And one of the biggest ways to stop them is to stop them in their mode is to expose them. Once you see them and expose them, it freaks them out because their confidence is that they can't be seen. The next thing you can do if you've gained momentum and they try to stop you is to start laughing because God laughs at his enemies. <laughs> he sits in heaven and laughs because his enemies are coming to nothing. This is very disheartening for an evil spirit. Don't take them seriously. They are disheartened because the only modes that they operate in are they want to get a response from you to know they've been effective and they want to re remain invisible. If you let them know you can see them and they're not effective, they're done. They don't have a plan B and this is hilarious because they've put everything into you not knowing what they're doing. They think they've that they have you believing you're a victim. One of their biggest goals is for you to think that of yourself. Right. It really is true. This is true. This is true. This is so true, man. The victim mentality. If you're uh, recovering uh, from the watchtower, look, every, every guy, all of you guys know, like we see it on r slash XJW, all the crying and the, the woe is me because I couldn't celebrate Halloween. And um, I have to put, I have to bring this image up. Hold on. This is, I made this image because, because of the victim mentality that, uh, that I see so much on Reddit amongst the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses community, man. It's got to be somewhere around here. I don't post a lot. And, and we have to renew our thinking. You're, yes, we were victims, but here we go. We were victims, but um, no longer, no longer. And we have to get over that. We're conquerors. We're warriors in Jesus Christ. So this image right here um, that I posted 10 months ago, it says, one of these kids complained that their childhood was stolen. Guess who? And then you can see here. And this grid of nine kids, I put, guess which one complained that their childhood was stolen? This kid right here. The one wearing the suit. The ones working hard, they didn't complain. The, to the, the child soldier didn't complain. But I see it, I see it all the time. Ex-Jehovah's Witnesses complaining because they couldn't trick or treat. And I'm not saying that you guys complained that you couldn't trick or treat, but we're not victims, okay? We're conquerors. We overcome the enemy. You all overcame the watchtower. 
but don't get bitter with the watchtower, okay? Because you could have been an atheist to pick your poison. It doesn't matter. What Jehovah's Witnesses, atheists, Muslims, Hindu, it doesn't matter what you are. They were, everybody's on their way to hell that doesn't accept Christ as Savior. So don't get mad because you were in a cult. So how can you avoid responding to the enemy's prompts to get your attention? Let them know that you can see them and they're not effective. Okay? Laugh at them, like Kevin said. Um, one thing Kevin talked about, uh, I started doing this after he, um, and Viviana gave me the idea too, is mocking the, de the enemy by uh, taking communion on satanic altars. So, um, like, if you have a family member and they have, like, an altar where they practice witchcraft, go ahead and uh, take communion on their little altar. And so, um, that's how you handle these uh, familiar spirits. And, uh, you know, it says here to start, start laughing because God laughs at his enemies. And he, it says he sits in heaven and laughs because his enemies are coming to nothing. So don't respond the way that a, a familiar spirit would want you to respond. Um, do the and you know what that means. Uh, do the exact opposite. I'm being convicted right now of losing my temper because the fast food workers in Puerto Rico are extremely slow. So I need to stop that. All right, keeping your momentum up. The great cloud of witnesses who encircle us are the ones cheering us on in our marathon race in life. They're the ones that are with us in spirit. Because of our determination, we look at the mark that we're going to, which is the finish line. And they're all cheering us on the whole way. That will keep your momentum up. Knowing that there are people well aware of their spiritual progress keeping up with you will give you hope. Your family members who have gone on to be with the Lord are well aware of how you are doing spiritually. They might not know everything that go, that's going on down here, but they do know about your spiritual progress. It talks about this in the Aramaic, that they encircle us like a cloud around us. You can't see them, but they are there. That's what you need to focus on, not on these demons that are trying to break your momentum. Hear the crowd roaring and cheering you on keep going the apostle paul and all those wonderful saints up there know who you are they built a foundation for us but now we're finishing it off because we're at the end of the age so question how does a cloud of witnesses influence you with keeping momentum when the enemy tries to break your stride so there it says here that they're cheering us on you can't see it but and if you're laughing at this and like, what, you know, the Bible says without, you have to have faith like a child. And Hebrew, let's go back up to uh, the first, it says here, remember, in Hebrews 12. For we all have these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. That's straight from the Bible. Okay, use your authority to keep the enemy out. You got to know who you are. I remember that anywhere Kathy and I got a house, we dealt with animals on the outside that wanted to be inside the house. Everywhere we went, any kind of animal wanted to be inside with us. There are boundaries. We're not, <laughs> we're not Noah's Ark. No one invited these animals in because we didn't invite them in. They just decided to break in. The most recent situation we had was with squirrels. I'd be playing my keyboard and they'd be sitting on the windowsill, windowsill just looking at me as I'm playing. And birds would line up and just sit there. And I'm thinking to myself, I guess maybe one day I'll play for people. We started to hear them in the attic and then in the walls. We spent thousands of dollars and we went through different people until we finally were able to keep them out of our house. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is just hilarious. <laughs> And they just kind of gave up and went silent for a while.
but I knew they were up to something. So one day we went out and something was going on with one of our SUVs. We had somebody come over and he shows me that there's a storage of nuts that's been there for about a year inside of our car, up in the engine and into that distributed cap. It was well, it was full of food as if the squirrel said, we're just storing stuff here. They didn't give up and they just kept coming at us. Eventually we used our authority and stopped it. What I'm trying to tell you is that the enemy will try to gain access to you. And if you shut one thing off, they're going to try to find another thing. I'm encouraging you that demons are pests. They're desperate and they're outside looking in at you. You're in and they're out. They want to be where you are, but they cannot be. These demon spirits had their chance and they did not do what they were supposed to do. So there's no resurrection for them. There's no redemption. I just want to encourage you to keep those pests out of your dwelling place. Spiritually drive them out and be aggressive with them. And don't let them trip you up. Don't let them have any rest at all. I say that because eventually they'll leave you alone because they don't have another plan. So what are some things you can do in your life that could be momentum breakers to stop the enemy, enemy and label them? Well, I mentioned before, is losing my cool with uh, like the Starbucks over here. It's like I gotta just, <clears throat> I gotta control my tongue, right? That's one of my momentum breakers. Uh, there's a lot of slow drivers here. Like, I'm telling you, like a single lane road, nobody in front, and I gotta stay behind someone driving 30 miles per hour. So uh, these are portals for the enemy to break my momentum, and I cannot let them respond. Um, and if anybody here watching this on YouTube is wondering about what Kevin's talking about here with the animals. And so animals can get demon possessed. And uh, depending on the, I guess, fero how ferocious an animal is. Um, it's like limited in its ferociousness. I don't know what the word is, ferocity. I, what kind of like, um, I guess, uh, danger it can put a Christian in. So if a, if a dog was demon-possessed, um, it could attack you. If a squirrel's demon-possessed, it'll put nuts in your car, like here. If a bird's demon possessed, it'll just they'll, they'll they'll try to lay their nest where there's wiring and maybe like tear up your house or make a hole so that water could get in and cause mold and destroy the you know start destroying the house from within. So um, they they try to get they're just looking for an a entry into your life, and animals uh, can get possessed by demons. So discuss what it means to use your authority in Christ. So as born-again Christians, our authority, we, we have complete dominion over the wicked spirits. And how do we do, how do we have dominion? How do we manifest our dominion in the spirit realm? It's with our mouth. We speak, we speak our dominion over. Everything is about our tongue. What we say comes to pass. Every, we have to speak are a victory over these wicked spirits and we have to plead the blood of christ over them too if you uh if you don't say anything against them and you don't renounce them if you don't pray against them then they're just going to have their way with you you have to be active this isn't uh well god's going to do everything for me and i'm just here existing like no you you got a sword and you got to Pull that sword out and fight in the battle or else you're going to get shot. You're going to get stabbed. All right. Three, discuss how yielding to the joy of the Lord would cause you to be happy in a situation where it would be abnormal. I have, you know what? I just got reminded of this right now. So I used to live in Miami. Miami has like the worst drivers in the world. I'm telling you, like, the most aggressive. This is the most dangerous place I've ever driven in my life. L.A. doesn't even compare. And um, 
the road rage there is like something out of like Mad Max Fury Road. It's insane. And when I got born again, I, I decided, you know, I'm born again and I'm not going to let this get to me. And then so I, I yielded to the joy of the Lord. And so and when someone would give me the finger or try to run me off the road or curse me out because I just got into their lane because I had to take a right turn. Uh, I didn't let it get to me. I just laughed it off. And I remember I was driving Uber there and this guy was like surprised. He's like, how is it that you're not losing your cool and offended? And like, you're la you just like, let that go. Right. Cause, uh, some lady gave us like a finger and he, he was going to lose it. He wasn't even the one driving it. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a born again Christian. I don't let, the, I, I don't let this, these people with road rage get to me. And I don't, right. I don't get offended when people cut me off because th you got to think about it this way. They need to get from point A to point B and you just happen with the speed and timing and location of everything. You just happen to be in the way and they have to cut you off because they're going to miss their exit or their turn. It's nothing personal. It's just a car. Don't get offended. So don't, uh, so yeah. So when, when things are looking like they're melting down, this is the guy you need to be. This is who you got to be right here. This little dog. <laughs> he's like, everything's on fire. And he's like, this is fine. Because this is, if you react like this, the enemy is going to lose it. They hate that. But this is, this is our image for this Bible study. That's got, we got to be like that. So I, uh, let's pray. And uh, the prayer that Kevin has here, uh, I break all those momentum breakers in the name of Jesus. I come against every curse that has been spoken over you. All my friends all over the world, we come against every evil spirit, every momentum breaker. You are not a victim. You are a beloved child of God. And Satan has lost this fight. I come against and drive out those momentum breakers right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. Just love on all our friends right now in the name of Jesus. And we break every curse that you have from the Watchtower Society and the Jehovah's Witnesses. All of these curses are breaking off, broken off you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we plead the, plead, plead the blood of Christ over all of the XJWs watching right now. The, the Jehovah's Witnesses that are doubting. And even those still trapped in the Watchtower. Amen. So, let's see here. Okay. So, um, share screen and stop sharing. Okay. Um, yeah, so is there anything you want to share, Viviana? Uh, that's fine. So, uh, thanks for tuning in, tuning in, uh, this week for, this is, uh, week 21. And, uh, we will see you next week. Shalom.